Welcome to Natural Horsemanship Solutions. We're going to take a look at catching a horse that doesn't want to be caught. And for starters, we have to think about how catching horses, they're prey animals and they don't really want to be caught. So instead of being sneaky, we want to think about being patient and smiling and think about just going to get our horse, going to get our friend and wanting to just sort of connect with them and play with them. Changing the way we think a little bit so that way it's not very sneaky and it's not bribery, but just how can we get that horse to be okay with us coming up to go and see them. So let's take a look at Zach. He's a horse that has just come to Partridge Horse Hill and he doesn't want to be caught. So this is Kaylee coming out to catch uh, Zach and she's doing sort of what normal people do where they go out and they've got their rope halter ready to go and she sort of looks at him and now she's offering her hand which has some treats in it and she's bribing him to come over and it looks like it's working and he's coming over and he's got that curious look on his face and she offers him the treat and she sort of leans back a little bit to get him to come in closer and he takes the cookie willingly and then she sort of comes forward nice and slowly letting him have more treats and brings up the rope to try to get it around his neck and then you can see he just sort of isn't really wanting to have any part of that but he is sort of looking for another cookie so he's sort of intently looking at her still and and then she goes to bring the rope up and he just sort of says forget it I don't want to have any part of that and just mo moves away not particularly fast but he's also not letting himself to get caught here and I'm going to just start by following him and I don't want to chase him, I don't want to make him run around because that's going to make him maybe leave and go further away. But I want to just follow and I'm following him behind him. I'm not walking straight at him, I'm just following in his path. And then what I want to do is start to play this little bit of a dance with him and try to show him that if he looks at me, I'm going to back off. Because what we want to remember with horses is that we want the right thing to be comfortable and the wrong thing uncomfortable. So when he's leaving me and walking away, I'm going to follow him and follow in his footsteps and just follow him, which makes horses feel a little bit uncomfortable because they are prey animals and they don't like to be followed or have something in that blind spot. And then when he does something that I want him to do, like there when he looks at me, I want to stop and sort of back off and take my belly button pointed away from him and take all that pressure off because I want to show him that that's what I would like him to do. So every time he sort of turns and looks at me like that, I pause and then when he stops looking at me, I just go in to follow him again in a nice sort of slow, easy motion. And here you can see he's looking at me, so I just pause and I try to keep my body language very relaxed. That's really important when you're trying to go get your horse, that you're not standing at them square on with your body because that can look pretty intense. So I'm trying to keep my belly button sort of off to the side. I've got a leg cocked. I'm just trying to be really relaxed in my body language and very inviting. I don't want to make it look like I'm trying to do anything sneaky. I'm just following very politely and I want to be very, very consistent in what I'm doing and very patient. So if I lose my patience and I just say, oh, this is frustrating and I just we're going to shoo him or something like that, that wouldn't be very effective. Instead, I just need to be really, really consistent so he understands, okay, every time I look at this girl, she sort of stops and backs off. Maybe I should be interested in her and actually keep looking at her. So that's the goal behind this sort of following. And if they get sort of stuck like that where they're here, he's sort of not looking at me anymore, but he's just sort of standing there. So I just gently shoo him away to sort of say, well, if you're not going to look at me and you're just going to stand there, then I'm going to politely shoo you away and cause you to keep moving. So I'm just going to keep playing this game with him a little bit. And then, so after following him around for a little bit longer, I get to this point where he's sort of looking at me a little bit more and he's starting to figure out it's better to be looking at this girl than it is to be walking away from her. And so timing here is very, very important. When he's looking at me or thinking about me, I stop and I pause. And when he's not thinking about me, I walk towards his bum or out and sort of behind that path because I want to cause him to look at me. And if I'm walking towards him at his head, he might just want to turn around and leave. And then it would also be more difficult for me to know if he's actually looking, turning to look at me or if he's just sort of staring that way because I'm standing right in front of him. So instead, I'm going out towards the side of the horse 
and that causes him to actually have to turn his head around and look at me and it becomes easier for me to tell but also it it puts me in a position where I'm less threatening. He feels like he's got a big open space in front of him where he can leave if he want to, if he wants to, and it's not at all trapping or controlling or anything like that. So this is interesting here where he sort of came up to smell the person that's filming, and the person that's filming is actually Kaylee, who was the one trying to get him earlier that he walked away from. And this just goes to show that Horses can tell when you want to, to get them, so we have to be so careful in our body language. So here he's allowed me to get close, so I'm going to give him the first opportunity to touch me, and he chose to touch me there. So then that means that I can come forward now and rub him because he's given me permission to, to come up and, and touch him because he touched me first. So I'm going to keep giving him the opportunity here to touch me, and then I'm going to rub him. He still looks a little bit tense there. He's sort of holding his head high, and he's got his ears sort of really focused on me. doesn't look incredibly relaxed. So I offered him the, the lead rope there to show him that. He didn't want to touch it just yet, so I offer it again. This time he's touching it, and now you can see there he's starting to lick and chew with his lips. So that's showing me that he's starting to think a little bit more, starting to get a little bit more relaxed. That's excellent there. He turned his head around all on his own, so he was thinking about touching that rope halter without me. He's still lacking some confidence. You can see how he's turning away a little bit there still. So I want to offer that rope halter again. And if I can make sure he's fully okay with that halter and with me being there before I go to put it around him, then I know that he'll be much more accepting when I do it. And so here when I go to take the rope around the horse, you can see that I made it part of sort of rubbing. I'm rubbing him with the rope as I'm putting it around his neck. So not being sneaky, not sort of slapping it over him. And I didn't come up over top of him like a bear holding that you know rope up high. I sort of just gave him a nice little hug and brought it around. And now because I'm on the right side of the horse and this rope halter is set up for the left, I just swapped the snap around so that way I could set it up. And you can see to put his nose in the halter, he actually brought his nose towards me to put his nose into the halter. So I didn't have to do any more work there in terms of asking him to uh, bend towards me a little bit more soften. And you can see there's the, the little baby horse beside me there who's interested in what we're doing. And I'm aware that the horse is there. And if he were to do anything that I might suspect would be threatening, that he might bite the horse I'm trying to get, I would have to shoo him away and make sure I protect the horse that, I've, that I'm with. And now that I've got the halter on him, I'm going to offer him a treat. And that tells him that he's rewarded for being with me. Some things we want to do when we're thinking about going to get our horse. Let's start with smiling. I know it sounds kind of cheesy and it might make you feel a little bit silly, but smiling will just change the expression a little bit about going to get your horse and it will soften everything in your body. We don't want to have that look on our face like, oh, I've got to try to get you today, don't you dare run away, because that's just going to make our horse get feel a little bit of tension and not want to come into that. Horses already don't want to be caught because they feel like they're praying well they're going to be trapped. But if we can soften our expression, then that's going to help get our horse. The other thing we want to do is be patient. So a lot of times when we go to get our horse, sometimes we might be hurried because we want to go have our lesson or our ride or whatever it is we're doing. And we might be tempted to just, you know, hurry up and go get them. But that's going to make a horse feel like they have to leave, if they're going to feel like they're rushed. Especially the horses that are a little bit more introverted and slow, they need more time to process what's happening. So we need to be patient. The other one we want to think about is letting the horse make the first touch. So when I go up to approach a horse in the field, I'm going to offer my hand and I will wait on the horse to touch me first. And that's sort of them accepting and reaching out to me to be curious and ready to go ahead and, and be, be, uh, be with me. And I might go up and I might rub them a little bit on their neck first, offer for them to touch me, offer them to touch my lead rope, and then I could go ahead and connect the rope. If I try to just go up and quickly snag the rope onto the horse or quickly go up and touch or grab them, that's going to make the horse want to withdraw and leave. So you want to be really careful about that. With our body language as well, we have to be careful that if we're sort of square on the horse, straight line coming in, 
that's the type of behavior that looks like a predator, looks like I'm going to come in, I'm going to get you. And that's going to make the horse probably walk away or be reluctant to come. Whereas if I relax my body language, maybe put my belly button off to the side a little bit, maybe approach in a little bit more of a rhythmic dance-like motion, a little bit off to the side, then that's not going to feel as threatening to the horse as if I come straight square on. So when we're going to get our horse, we have to think a little bit about the process of getting our horse, but then what happens after they're with us? Do we take them out and work them until they're sweating hard and then just put them back with a cold sweat? Or do we give them some something to eat maybe that they enjoy eating? Or when we're riding them, do we try to do things that they want to do? Or do we just lunge them in mindless circles and bore them to death? Because the horse needs to have a better reason than our beautiful pretty face to come out and come see us, that's not a good enough reason of, well, I pay your board, so you must come out and do what I say. That doesn't work with horses. We need to keep in mind that the experience when they're with us has to be a good one. So some of the things that we can try to do are figure out what do they like. Not all horses are food motivated. A lot of them like treats, yes, but they even just like being playful, or maybe they like to have scratches, or maybe they just want time to just stand and chill out with you in the corner of the arena and just take a break. And if we can do more of what our horses want and try to fit some of that into what we're doing and try to be fair with them, be equitable with them, and do things they enjoy, then it's gonna be a much better experience for them, which also makes it super important to always end our sessions with our horse on a positive note, so that way they can look forward to the next time with us.